Holy cow. In all my years following tennis, covering tennis, I don't think there's ever been coaching news that is so blockbuster, so shocking. But heading into 2025, Novak Djokovic's next coach will be one Andy Murray, the three-time major champion, the former world number one, the two-time Olympic gold medalist, a man who Novak has battled 36 times in his career, will now be joining him in his coaching box. Only about six months removed from retirement. We have seen super coaches before. We saw Becker come in. We saw Lendl come in. We saw Edberg come in. Some great players have decided to become coaches. All of them were a decade or more off of playing Andy Murray is fresh off the tour, joining Novak Djokovic as he heads down the stretch, the final stretch of his career, presumably. This is unbelievable news. And of course, Djokovic has had gone most of 2024 without an official head coach. He split from longtime coach Goran Ivanisevic, who was once in a tandem with even longer time coach Marion Vida. Ivanisevic and Djokovic split back in March around Indian Wells. There was a lot of speculation at that time of uh, who would replace Goran as Novak's coach, and we there was there was never an answer. Went the whole year without an answer. But Andy Murray is the next guy to step into that role. So, all right, first of all, Murray is a guy who whose qualities have been very evident as a player. Um, he is highly opinionated, highly analytical. Because of those things, he was known as a notoriously difficult player to coach because coaches would come in and they would have certain opinions and often Andy would have his own opinion. And I think that led to a lot of coaching relationships where, where it almost, it was difficult for coaches to break through and kind of shape Andy in the way that they might have wanted to because Murray was so strong-headed and had such strong opinions about his own game and what he should have been doing that it was difficult for a coach to actually break through. So that's the that's the kind of tennis mind we're talking about here. We're talking about a tennis mind who has a lot of thoughts and a lot of convictions. And that in itself, I think, is a great quality for a coach. You want someone who is going to see the game in, in a way that creates a lot of ideas and opinions because that is going to produce uh, the the spark for what will ultimately become coaching. He has also studied all, all of these players. I mean, the fact that he is so fresh off the tour, I, I do believe gives him a pretty unique advantage. Uh, now, he's played these guys. And that certainly helps that he's experienced uh, a lot of Novak Djokovic's 2025 opponents. Andy Murray will have played and in some cases will have played recently and therefore will have gone about the process of getting ready to play them and creating a game plan for them. And it's not going to be copy and paste, obviously, to Novak because Djokovic is a different player. But just to have already put his mind through those paces will have given him a head start. So I believe that's a that's a really interesting angle here, uh, where Murray being so fresh off the tour is uh, is going to give him a bit of a leg up. And I think for Djokovic specifically, and this is really important, his next coach needed to fit in a specific box. There needed to be a specific existing relationship already there. You'll see some younger players. They will go through the process of finding a coach, and they may interview some unfamiliar names. Right? If you're Yannick Sinner a couple of years ago, and you've just fired Ricardo Piatti, uh, you're interviewing a Darren Cahill because you're aware of his track record. But that relationship isn't already there. And I, I don't think Novak would have wanted to go that route. Uh, there's no time really to build a new relationship. And Djokovic has already created a vast web 
of relationships within tennis. There's no reason to venture outside of that. He and Andy Murray have a very special one, of course, as rivals, but uh, going way back, they knew each other as juniors. So they have that special connection. There will immediately be buy-in. There will immediately be respect. Andy doesn't need to prove to Novak that he is a tennis mind worthy of the position he is now entering in. A younger coach, a less established coach, a more unfamiliar coach to Novak, there may have been a feeling out process. There may have needed to be a building of trust and respect. Andy and Novak should be able to hit the ground running here. That's really, really important. And for, for Murray, same thing. Not only does his stature give you know immediate buy-in from Novak or provide immediate buy-in from Novak, it also means that he's not going to have so much reverence for Novak Djokovic. And there will be some, I'm sure, naturally, and there should be. But there's not going to be so much reverence in that relationship that Andy is going to be scared to share his opinion. And I just think joining Djokovic's coaching team in 2025, that is scary. That's a scary position to come into. Andy Murray's not going to be scared. Not with his stature. Not with his, uh, not with his convictions as a tennis mind. So no time to build a relationship, no room for experimentation. And I think Andy kind of, I know it might feel like an experiment, but in a lot of ways it's not. Uh, we kind of know, Novak knows what he's going to be getting from Andy. So it checks that box. Uh, ultimately, we've had conversations in the last, you know, several months about what Novak might need in a coach. And other than that, pre-existing relationship that carries immediate trust and respect, which I think was a requirement. Uh, the other thing in terms of, is this going to be effective? Uh, to me, it's it comes down to Novak Djokovic at this stage in his career, having accomplished everything he's ever set out to accomplish, needing a spark. Andy Murray coming into the coaching box is more than a spark. It is fireworks. That's what this is. It is fun. It is new. It is exciting. It is attention grabbing. And I think that energy, that excitement, a partnership that is going to, to raise some eyebrows, at least in that initial period, should be able to provide Novak some spark. We also know that Andy is a fiery character himself, one of the toughest competitors we've ever seen grace the tennis court. So, this is a, a shot in the arm for Novak that I think is needed because we go back to what is the most important thing for Djokovic moving forward. It's going to be the motivation, and a coach has a role in that. It ultimately comes from Djokovic. He is the one who needs to be fully committed. That comes from within. That comes from, from his decision-making and his heart, what he wants and how badly he wants it. But the biggest job for Andy, in my opinion, is going to be to come in and be a motivator. Make sure Novak stays fiery. Make sure he stays invigorated, both in training on and on the match court. Because one of the things that wasn't really right, there were a couple things that were off for Djokovic outside of that, that patch of brilliance at the Olympics. But one of the things was you weren't really getting the venom and the fire that I think you would want from, from Djokovic. And uh, I think we saw that in the matches but it probably bled into the training a little bit. I think it would be safe to assume. I do want to talk about Andy and what this move from his perspective says. I think it says a lot about Andy Murray. Here's a guy with millions in the bank, great family, hasn't had much time to bask in his success, to do the things that touring pros look forward to in retirement. I know it sounds crazy, but normally, you know, eating eating a good amount of junk food, playing some video games potentially, maybe doing some leisurely travel. Everybody's different, but you get the point. Murray hasn't had a lot of time to, you know, enjoy the the retired lifestyle that he has earned. And most players, after flying around the world for the last 20 years, 
Like they're ready to park themselves for a little bit. They don't necessarily want to rush back. Andy Murray never missed an Australian Open, right? Last year, or this year, I should say, this January, he played the Australian Open. The very next year, he'll come back as a coach. He's down under again. Like, there's no break for Andy. So, uh, I just think it speaks to how big an opportunity this was for him. Obviously, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You're not going to going to get to coach Novak Djokovic. It's not as if this job is going to be available for him three, four years down the road. At least you wouldn't assume so. So for me, it it speaks volumes about Andy's recognition of opportunity and potentially his competitive drive, his love for tennis. Was he getting the itch? He just couldn't stand it away from the game. I don't know. Uh, we'll hear more from Andy, but there are reasons we don't see this kind of thing often. And one of those reasons is it's hard to pluck a retired legend off the couch when their behind just arrived onto the couch three, four months ago. That's difficult. So let me end on this. Um, there is a, There are a lot of fallacies about coaching in tennis. There's always a lot of speculation. There's always a lot of opinions out there about how coaching can or can't affect a player. And sometimes it, it might be overblown. Sometimes it's not overblown. Uh, but obviously this partnership doesn't guarantee success. Other than development, and development is just absolutely crucial. Other than development, coaching matters on the margins. So you're hoping to get an extra 5%. You're hoping to get an extra 10%. But Djokovic, Djokovic's success in 2025 is not going to be down to Andy Murray. It's going to be down to, can he move well enough to compete with Sinner and Alcaraz? And that's up to him, his trainer, his physio, father time, his biological clock. Can he continue to fend it off? That's going to be the one thing. Then the second thing is going to be, what does he have in his heart right now? And can he fire himself up? And I think... Part of that is going to be Andy's job to help. But those are the two things that are going to be, you know, mostly determine what kind of level can Novak Djokovic bring in 2025. Because Andy is not going to come in and radically change the way Novak is playing, Djokovic's tactics. There's no room for that radical change. Novak is doing the right things on the court. He, he understands exactly how he needs to play. That adaptation and the development of, you know, bigger, badder offensive weapons, that is in phase four or five out of five. Like, there's not much room to push that any further. So tactically and technically and developmentally, nothing radical is going to happen here as far as I'm concerned. If I'm wrong... Well, then I'll be wrong, and I'll be surprised. Uh, but what this is mostly going to be about is finding a little bit of spark, which is going to help on the margins. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this plays out. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.